Let me ask you about um, Josh Warrington. We know there were negotiations between uh, you guys and Shakur Stevenson's promoters about a possible unification fight. Now it appears Stevenson's taking another fight either in the interim or instead of against Mariaga. What's the latest with all that? Well, he was always taking that fight. He was always going to fight in March. And at the time, Bob Aram and myself were talking. We more we sort of had a deal in place subject to him, him or the winner coming through willing to come to the UK. We had, you know, we tried to work out the terms with Josh, but um, we didn't get there. Our contracts was at an end with Josh, and we were negotiating for a new one, but the uh, bottom line is now the IBF have put the fight out between him and uh, Kid Galahad. And that's not a fight that excites me after the last time. I made it very clear after the last fight when it was made, who'd want to watch this again? Well, I wouldn't want to watch a game. No one want to pay for it. Not down to Josh. Josh done everything that was asked him, all down to Galahad being so negative, so it is what it is. That's his next fight. I believe that would be his next fight. So when you said the contract had elapsed and you were talking to Josh about a new one, the Galahad uh, mandated purse bid to kind of put that into another perspective. So where does that leave your relationship with Josh? Uh, well, my relationship with Josh is I wish him well for the future. You know what happens? I'm not interested in that fight, end of story. So I wish him well for the future. And uh, we've, had, we've done everything we said we'd do with him. Everything, everything I said I'd deliver to him, I'd deliver to him. And we had some great times together and it helped him and it was good for us, it was good for everybody concerned and that's how I wish him well for the future. One thing I should ask, and, and I think it's pertinent, when Josh split from his previous promoters and, and signed with you guys the first time, there was rumours going round that one of the reasons for the split was that his view of where he belonged, either on the card or on pay-per-view or whatever it was, didn't match with the people working with him. Has he reached a similar point now? In what way? In that he wants to be at a certain level and, and I wouldn't the Galahad certain. fight means he can't be. Well, he can't be. Well, that's out of my hands. That's out of my hands. You know, what can you do? You know, um, he would, you've got to think about what were the offers for him to go to the States? I mean, the offers were derisory for him to go over there and fight in the UK. And I think um, it, it was... Richard Schaefer for one fight offered, I think it was about half a million. We said it was going to be such a bad offer, he was embarrassed to tell him. But it's what he said it was worth. So we were trying to bring the fight here. Where he's at, I can't do nothing about it. The IBF have called, it, have called for that fight. That's what it is. And in the meantime, Stevenson had already signed up. Stevenson didn't want to fight him straight away anyway. That's why he wants to get a bit more experience. That's why he's taking the fight. Be realistic. I'm going to back up and look and see what's going on. Um, it is what it is, no, you know, nothing I can do about that at all. And just to give you the opportunity to clear something up regarding the first Warrington-Galahad fight, there's been a few kind of whispers in the past few days, I'm sure you've seen some of it, I can tell by your expression this isn't news to you, about um, Galahad not getting paid in full for the first fight, can you just clear that up for us? That's just bullshit, you know, at the end of the day, Queen we put their bid in for the fight, they bid 1.6 million, it's a matter of public record. 200 more than Matram, who had the champ, who, 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 who was their guy, yeah. with all, all their promises. Um, what Hearn, because I know it's come from Hearn, what he said is it's not inaccurate or misleading, it's just a lie. The IBF conditions from that, uh, for the purse bid, was that 35% of the monies had to be lodged, which was about $560,000. That was lodged with the IBF, which they will confirm. I've always wanted to let the fight go, go and take place. And the IBF paid Galahad with that money. So he got paid by the IBF, you know, obviously Queensbury money, paid direct. So that is him done and paid for. He got his purse. If that's not the case, I'm sure you've had a screen from the IBF by now or something, but they paid him. But it's very easy to do. Ring the IBF and ask. Them. And you know, and Josh done well out of it. He got in fact, I think we we, we obviously we, uh, we, we topped his purse up for, for the fight as well, but that's what we agreed and uh, it was what it was. Is it frustrating when you see this sort of stuff? I know. Look, do you know what in this business? All you get is people blowing down people's ears. It happens all the time. And I look back on relationships like Ricky had. I should have stepped in with Ricky. You know, it's only I was dealing with the person he told me to deal with and the message going back to him was no good. Same thing happened with Naz. Naz, you know, Regret public record, so he shouldn't have got him. Ricky and I get on really well together now. He knows the, he knows the score, he knows what happened. Um, that happens in this business. There's always somebody there who's always blowing down their ears, telling them what that sometimes what they want to hear. But there's an easy way to clear anything up, with, no matter who you are, whatever. It's coming out, be, be a man, meet up, and say, right, this is what I've been told, this is what it is, let's, let's deal with it. That's 
how I deal with things, but you know, other people do it other ways. But this is a business where you've always got somebody who's always got something to say. That's how it is.